and welcome back to the final part in this Little Dorrit series where we are making a straw bonnet. It's been a long old haul with this project. And six months after finally finishing the outfit, we're getting to the last of the videos. So thank you for sticking with this project for so long. If you'd like to catch up on the rest of the series, I will put a link to the playlist here for you. But if you're just interested in how to make a bonnet, I'll get into that now. So to make this straw bonnet, you're going to need to get your hands on some millinery straw braid. Now you can sometimes find this from specialist suppliers, but it's hard to come by and quite expensive. So it's often just easier to deconstruct a cheap straw hat. I actually bought these straw discs from Parkin Fabrics. They were very cheap and I ended up needing two of them to make this bonnet as it's pretty large. I didn't unravel the disc all the way. I left a circle with the diameter I needed the tip of my bonnet to be. I then began coiling the straw braid I had just unravelled around the edge of the circle, but instead of overlapping the layers to make a flat disc, I whipped the edge together at right angles to begin making the crown of the bonnet. I then kept on coiling the straw braid around, overlapping the previous row slightly and whipping the braid in place until my crown was the desired height. I was mostly doing this by eye and using a few fashion plates as reference. Once I had my bonnet crown, I drew around the bottom edge to begin making the pattern piece for the brim. Again, this I mostly did by eye using fashion plates for reference. I went bigger than my instincts were telling me because I tend to underestimate just how ridiculously big these things are. I then cut the pattern piece out and modelled it to determine if the size and shape were right or not. I felt it was a bit wide and needed a more graceful curve, so I played around until I was happy with the pattern shape. I then began pinning the straw braid into the shape of the pattern piece, starting in the middle and overlapping the previous row. When I got to the ends, I left a little excess, but just folded the straw back on itself. I then zigzagged all that braid into place on the machine. This was tricky and awkward to get under the machine. I also kept catching my skin on the pins that were sticking up at various angles from the brim. But machining it was infinitely quicker than hand sewing it all, so it was worth it in the end. I didn't cut off the excess braid just yet, as I knew I wanted to use it to finish the edges of the bonnet. So once all of that was sewn into place, I drew in the curve from the pattern piece at the back of the bonnet, where I'd done all that changing of direction, trimmed the excess off, and then fitted the brim onto the crown of the bonnet to check it was the right size before machining the two edges of the brim together. I could then neaten that cut edge by machining the length of braid that I hadn't trimmed down earlier over the raw edges and the untidy section of the join. I also machined a layer of braid around the very outer edge of the brim so that it was a double thickness at this edge. This was sort of decorative, but also gave the outer edge some more stability. I folded under and neatened the raw edge and the brim was complete. All I had to do then was attach it to the crown. I pinned the crown into position and tried the bonnet on just to make sure I was happy with the shape. I love this bonnet so much, I'm so glad I took the time to make it. Then I hand stitched the crown to the brim, first the lower edge from the inside and then the top edge from the outside. I used a strong linen thread, mostly because it was the best colour match I had for the straw, and a whip stitch to join the two layers together. With that, the structure of the bonnet was complete and it was onto the decoration. I was heavily inspired by this fashion plate, which appeared to have this ruched fabric section on the bonnet. So I made a tube of fabric out of offcuts from the dress, pressed the seam open, and then turned the tube right side out. I played around with the ribbons to trim the hat with. 
I had wanted to include this yellow as a contrast pop of colour, but in the end, I decided against it. Instead, I just used white one inch wide ribbon and threaded the ribbon through the fabric tube to ruche it up and then hand stitch the ribbon in place. I also added ribbons to tie the bonnet in place and then it was complete. I know you've seen the bonnet before in the reveal bits of all the other videos, but still, I love it so much I've included a few more close-ups for this video. That's maybe one of my favourite things I've ever made, and there's just something about a bonnet that makes you feel as cute as a button. I particularly like the way the light can shine through the lightweight straw, and that decoration is simple but still has impact. Oh, I'm so pleased with it. <laughs> And we've made it to the end of Little Dorrit and Relaxed Regency. It's been such a pleasure to share all this with you, both my making process and the concept behind this collaboration. I hope this project has inspired you to sew at your own pace and to know that it's okay to cheat at sewing sometimes or do things that are lazy or perceived as bad practice or whatever. Not every project you make has to be super challenging or historically accurate. It's okay to make things slowly and just for the fun of making them. So thank you all so much for your support with this project and this collaboration. It's been really wonderful and it's meant an awful lot to me that I was able to do this. I did mention it previously, but I am hoping to do some more historical projects on this channel. And I quite like this format of making them in like a little series, so I think that's what I'm going to do going forward. I've already got an idea lined up for my next costuming project, but you shall have to wait and see what that's going to be. So if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to this channel and make sure to leave me a comment letting me know which historical eras you would like me to try next. And all that's left to say is thank you very much for watching. See you next time.